The first person I want to invite into our space to address any of these questions as you see them um, fit is Kate Lesbidane, who is a former uh, student activist at the University of the Party Grant and also the Northwest, who got involved in politics, ended up being detained and found himself um, on Robben Island as a prisoner, and since then has been involved in all sorts of uh, political programs. So, here is someone who's been deeply invested in what many people imagine would be a just South Africa. So, it's interesting to hear these reflections as someone who was heavily involved in the current state about the current state of the things of how we can put it Can we put our hands together and kindly walk in the Let me start off with a session that the way to see South Africa is possible, and it is possible sooner than many of us think. This is one part of what is possible in, in, in our lifetime. I've had a little bit of passion, and I'll explain myself slightly later. The idea of not that racism is a problem, it continues to haunt our country and people beyond this country experience racism. And anyone who deals with South Africa or studies South Africa should expect that we would have a problem of racism. In my view, however, racism is in the truth. We have a lot less of it now than we did 30, 40 years ago. And it, there are people that used to run around to see and to take it 40 years ago, so what they see now, they don't see relative to what happened 30, 40 years ago. What they see now is big and ugly and has to be uh, rejected to the secrecy. I agree with that, but in a lot of particular perspective, it is less, less possible than it was in, 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 in the past. I also want to assert that Part of the, the, the prejudices that arise from racism arise ultimately from the fact that we still have a lopsided distribution of resources, especially education and skill in my society. And we, and by we I mean the government, have to take responsibility for the continued lopsided distribution of especially educational skills, there's absolutely no reason why 20 years after 1994 we still have that problem. The reason we have that problem is because I think the government hasn't done what it has done or what it should be doing. The, 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 another part of what I think underpins racist attitudes in South Africa is the continued use of concepts and language that continue to support uh, racism. We continue, for example, in South Africa to look at our country as a country that is made up of four races. Now, that's wrong. That's a construct of apartheid. We have no business in retaining, in retaining that conceptual underpinning of racism in South Africa. We should reject it. Uh, it should never, ever have been allowed to percolate into the conversations that we have now. Seeing South Africa as made up of whites, colors, blacks, and Indians is absolutely incorrect, and it is something that was given to us by a party. We should not have taken it. That said, I must, however, say that there are issues that we inherited from the past disadvantages we inherited from the past that attached to race. We should fix those by targeting people who are specifically uh, disadvantaged by those policies and the manner in which we, we, we implemented it. And there are a whole host of other things that we do that I think continue to use concepts and ways of looking at society that were borrowed from the past which we shouldn't 
I think, continue to use. We should look at people as people, finish and class, and deal with them from that basis. The next set of issues I think I want to refer to is a, a complete failure to deal with the power that has been gained since 1994 to reverse problems of, 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 of the past. Just to take one simple example, we haven't used microeconomic tools to achieve non-racist ends. We can. Uh, there's no reason, for example, why we're not using macroeconomic tools to drive the cost of debt down, and that would benefit the very people who have been victims of, 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 of racism. But it must be understood that on its own, driving the cost of debt down is not going to solve the problem, because people who do need to invest in our country need to bring their own equity to, to the party. And I want to assert that now, in 2017, black people have capital resources that are unparalleled. We've never had as much capital as we have now. And that capital has not been used to achieve the ends of fighting racism, growing the economy. Instead, we have posited a political viewpoint which I think detracts from the use of, of, of that capital one and two, the power that vests in the state to create conditions for that to happen. The power that we now have of, of educating people we have not used as well as it could have been used. And at this stage I want to pause and argue that in the past the oppressed people in South Africa have been at their best at times of quantitatively, quantitatively more production of educated people than was the case prior to that. In the period leading up to the formation of the ANC, there were lots and lots of black people, especially in the Eastern Cape, who acquired education, and those are the people, one, who led to the formation of the ANC, and two, who defined a new way and new strategies of fighting oppression at the time. That repeated itself in the 50s. And the reason it repeated itself in the 50s is because educational resources within the black community moved from the Eastern Cape and KZN up to the Transvaal at the time. And there was a huge production of educated people. And by educated people, I mean people who are modestly educated. These are not university graduates. But the production of those people in that period saw itself, or rather manifested itself, in better organized communities and communities that were prepared to stand up and, 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 and chart a way forward. In the 60s, we were able to be as good as we were as black people because we were beginning to, to rip the effects of education. At that stage, for the first time in the country, there were about 2,000 black students at universities. And that showed itself up in the way in which we were organized. In the, in the 80s, and that started in the 70s, again, education was the main driver of the heightened consciousness and the heightened opposition to apartheid that we saw. At those periods, what was remarkable about the achievement of black people is that they were better organized, and the basis of that organization was the production of more people that were educated. What is odd about the period we're in now is that we have more educated people than we've ever had in our country. And by educated people in this period, I mean people who have university education. But we are the least organized people, or rather, this period marks the worst organizational performance by black people. And the only thing I can see that is impacting on this position that I'm taking is that we now control state power. We have failed to understand state power and to use it in the manner that would advance the cause of the oppressed and achieve, or rather try to achieve, all of the objectives that we've attempted to achieve, one of which would be a non-racial South African. We've used state power as an attempt to create a handful of people who have resources. We want to transfer resources of the state 
into individual hands, but we do so on the basis that those who will benefit are, are a handful of selected people. Not only have we used state power in that way, there are pools of capital that have been organized over a period of time that are regulated by the state. The attention on those resources has also had a disempowering effect on what we're trying to achieve. Look at the attitudes that we have towards outfits like the PAC and a whole host of other pools of capital. And that attention is geared at ensuring that those pools of capital are taken away from the, where they are, i.e. owned by a variety of people and lots and lots of people. We're trying to drive those into the hands of a handful of people and that, I think, is a problem that we have not been able to resolve. Let's use state power as we have used resources that we've had, particularly in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s, and in that period, the last 25 years of the 1800s, to benefit as many people as possible. Okay. One minute. Okay, I'm going to try and conclude. Uh, let, let me try and draw conclusions from what I've said. It is possible, and I think it is possible to do so fairly soon, to achieve a society that is free from the racist constraints that we've worked under in the past. But for that to happen, I think we should use the power that we have to benefit the majority of people in the country. We should not attempt to colonize those those powers to benefit a handful of people. The manner in which we have used the state has been problematic. The manner in which we have used narratives about what colonialism stood for in South Africa has been problematic. Colonialism was opposed from day one when colonialists landed in South Africa. The story of colonialism in South Africa is not just a story of dispossession. It is a story of a proud people who stood up and fought back. And from that very day in the Western K, people fought back, and we fought all the way until 1994. Why belittle the efforts that people invested in that fight by simply protecting the narrative of colonialism as a narrative of nothing more but dispossession? It isn't dispossession. It is about a story of people who are proud. We fought against the person. We fought against people who are attacking our freedom in our country. We fought against men. This possession in the country. So there are a whole host of stories within that anti colonial structure that are to be told and elevated to an important position. It is only when all of these things happen that an anti racist South Africa would be possible. And in my view, it is possible very soon. Come on, if I need it, oh, hell,